Har de eller? Hallå. Mm, hallå. Hör du mig? Hello everyone, I uh, hope you're doing fine. Welcome to this FlexCube webinar about lean, uh, about forklift free production. Uh, my name is Per and I will be your presenter today. 
together with uh, Olaf Brown, who will do some live design later uh, in this webinar. So let's get started. And if you have some questions, I kindly ask you to do those uh, when we end the webinar. And please make sure that you also have your microphones muted uh, during the webinar. So we will save all the questions for, for the last minutes of the webinar. So to start with, what is the main reason why we should go forklift free? I think if you are looking into some literature, if you are doing some Googling, we can see that on the top of most uh, lists, it's always the safety uh, perspective. That is the top uh, reason or the top driver why we should go forklift free. And uh, it's a lot of uh, statistics uh, available related to forklift uh, traffic. And it's uh, statistics that shows that uh, it's a dangerous and it's an inefficient uh, machine that doesn't really meet our needs uh, to handle future material handling. And when it comes to the safety issues, we can see that only in the US we have 85 fatal accidents uh, every year. We have almost 35,000 serious injuries related to forklift accidents. And if we look at the type of the accidents, we can see that 42% is related to operators that are being crushed uh, when the, the vehicle is tipping. And we also have a major risk for people that is outside the vehicle during transport. And of course, uh, in case of a, a tragic uh, accident, it's also very huge costs related to those uh, type of accidents. So safety is a really driver for uh, getting rid of forklifts in, in manufacturing plants. Uh, but we also have a lot of other drivers uh, and one main driver is uh, the flow and efficiency. And this is a very simple example showing a comparison between a forklift and a target train with five carts. And in this case, we are going to move five pallets from a warehouse out to uh, a kitting area. So it's five pallets that will be replenished. And as you can see in the forklift case, you need to uh, uh, supply or replenish uh, every pallet one by one. So you, you go there with a the full pallet and you take the empty pallet with your back. So you need to do this uh, trip five times. If you look at the, uh, the left where we have the target train solution with five cards, uh, we can actually do this uh, replenishment in one route because we can transport five pallets at the same time. So if we are changing pallet at position number one, for example, we will uh, replenish the empty pallet on the cart and we will uh, replace with a new cart. And by working with this methodology, we can replenish all the pallets in one route. And it's a reduction in transport distance of uh, a little bit more than 60%. So it's a really a big uh, difference. And I think it's a simple example that really shows the the benefits of uh, uh, one forklift free solution, which is the target train. Uh, but when it comes to material handling challenges, uh, it's happening a lot out there that will increase uh, the complexity for all the guys working with the logistics engineering. Uh, and um, yeah, there is a need to, to rethink and uh, really find new ways of, of doing material handling in the future. And the next slide will show uh, the main reason for that. And it's uh, driven by consumer behavior. Because consumers, they expect more and more products. They expect more and more variants. And they really want more uh, customization of their products. And this is uh, valid both for uh, private consumers, but also business to business. We can see this uh, trend pretty obvious. And uh, if this was not enough, uh, the life cycles of the products are also decreasing. So the customers or the market expects that uh, companies come up with new products more and more frequent. And I think uh, you can conclude pretty simple that this will put some really 
uh, high requirements on the logistic systems because this will result in a huge number of parts that needs to be received, it needs to be supplied inside uh, the manufacturing plants. And this is a really, really big challenge going forward uh, within uh, manufacturing. And this trend has uh, resulted in a, a new way of supplying. So if we look at the past, uh, we had big or la large deliveries uh, that was uh, supplied or replenished uh, pretty unfrequent. And in that case, I, I think it makes sense to use a forklift because yeah, um, it's good to move large uh, items uh, pretty unfrequent. But based on the increased number of parts, uh, we see that in the future we will have smaller and smaller uh, deliveries. And we will also have more and more frequent deliveries. So of course this will uh, uh, add some really new challenges when it comes to the way we, we do the material handling. And I think it's, it's getting more and more obvious that the forklift will not be able to, to solve uh, this type of complexity. So more and more frequent deli deliveries, uh, but of course we also have the, yeah, the basic requirements when it comes to material supply, the just-in-time principles that we need to deliver the right amount of parts. We need to, of course, deliver the right material. Uh, it needs to arrive in the right condition. It cannot be damaged. It should be delivered to the right place, uh, to the right sequence, and also in the right time. So it's a lot of uh, things that needs to be fulfilled in order to supply parts to, for example, a final assembly line. And all of those uh, trends or, yeah, uh, how do you say, the, what, what is going on out in the plants are resulting in what we can see on this slide here, that we need more and more uh, footprint for material handling. And uh, there are studies showing that right now, like in an average plant, uh, more than 50% of the factory space is actually used for material handling. And if you look at the cost of the product, it's 75% uh, of the production cost is related to material handling. So then I think we understand all that it's really crucial to do the material handling in a very efficient way as it has such a big impact on, on the product cost. And uh, yeah, you can see in the future box to the right, we are expecting that it will be even more parts to handle uh, in the plants. So it will more and more like a transition into distribution centers. So you handle a lot of parts that is put together before they are shipped out to the to the final customers. So if you look at the plant in general, it's almost uh, more material handling than you actually have assembly or some other operations. So this is, uh, or this was the trends and the reasons uh, why companies are looking into going forklift free. And it's, uh, they need to find different ways of handling this type of complexity. And uh, we have tried to summarize uh, like the main parameters or the areas where, it, where you need to take uh, decisions when you are starting a forklift free project. And uh, it's not really easy to do a forklift free project. It's pretty complex actually. I have seen both uh, success projects, but I've also seen uh, failure projects and it's pretty small details that can uh, make a very big difference. But uh, if we look at into the different uh, parameters that we will go through, uh, the main ingredients in a forklift free project, we have the people, of course, they are the really, uh, they are the ones that will uh, yeah, fulfill or e uh, execute the project. So they need to be involved already from the start. Uh, we need some type of mover, uh, a tugger, AGV or whatever, something that can move the, the parts. Then we have the loads, uh, it can be a euro pallet, a containers, a kit. Uh, it's always uh, something that needs to be transported. Then we have the carts, uh, that's where flex cube comes into the picture. But as we will see later, the cart is really the 
key enabler for going forklift free and it integrates with a lot of different parameters here. And finally, we also have the layout and that is really crucial because you can buy a lot of nice equipment, but if you don't have a, a layout that is adapted for, yeah, for forklift free production, you will not uh, reach the, the results that you want to have. So if we start with, uh, with, with the people, we have gathered some uh, questions or some topics that needs to be discussed. And first is uh, the manning and the tasks, because what we see is that the tasks, the tasks are really uh, changing for people that are used to work uh, with forklifts. Uh, going from uh, driving a forklift to uh, handling carts, driving trains and so on is a pretty big uh, it's a pretty big change, so it needs to be very clear uh, how those tasks will look like and to explain this early in, in, the, in the projects so that everyone are aware of this. Uh, when it comes to ergonomic requirements, it's also really important to involve the, um, the operators. They are the ones that can give uh, really good feedback uh, and evaluate uh, their future way of working. And they will actually work with this equipment every day, so it's really crucial that they are involved. So they should uh, evaluate the push forces, pull force, uh, rotations, uh, how frequent they need to handle carts, for example, how long distance they need to handle them and so on. So it's a very important area. And here we have seen some, some failures when, when companies try to handle too heavy loads, for example. Uh, then the operators feel that it's really not good for their uh, working environment. So it's uh, important to evaluate all those uh, things during the project. Then we also have the, the union. It's uh, good to just uh, have them aligned with, uh, with IDs. And uh, we also have uh, the why. Uh, I think the people really need to understand why uh, companies are going for fifth free. And if you can, uh, have them to understand uh, the main benefits and the benefits for them, it would be a much easier project to execute. Then we have the vehicle and drive training. Uh, going from a forklift to a tugger, for example, is uh, pretty different. So just because you are an excellent forklift driver, you are not an excellent tugger train driver. So that is something that we recommend that you have education and certificates for people that will uh, operate uh, this type of equipment also. And then finally, the IT systems. We sometimes hear stories that uh, companies are struggling with implementing forklift free because the IT systems are not... Uh, sorry, I have some struggling. Because the IT systems... Uh, because the IT systems uh, are not uh, adapted to handle uh, yeah, the delivery quantities or the batch size or whatever. So it needs to be some uh, evaluation of the IT systems to make sure they are aligned also with the forklift free strategy. So that is the people. And then also, you also need some, uh, some hardware to do this. You need some stuff to move the things around in the plant. And in some cases, you can use uh, humans. If you succeed to make a, a smart layout, you can use uh, humans to transport pallets uh, and carts uh, pretty short distances. If it's uh, heavy parts, uh, you can use push units or power casters. Uh, but it's still for a pretty short distance. The, the main uh, equipment uh, used when doing forklift free projects is the tow tractor. So you have a tow tractor and you uh, connect uh, different type of trains, con or connecting different type of parts, doing trains, and you are moving those around in the plant. And we also see a strong trend, a really strong trend when it comes to the, the robotics or the automated solutions. It's called AGV, AGC and SDV, which is self-driving vehicle. So this is something that uh, for sure will uh, increase and we will see more of those uh, in the plants going forward. You also need to consider the loads. Uh, this slide shows the most typical loads. 
that are involved in forklift free projects. Uh, it's pallets, plastic containers, mesh containers, and totes, and so on. And it's really important that uh, in the projects that you do like a mapping, so you know uh, in a structured way what loads uh, you have, and also to check the consumption rates, for example, how much will be consumed of this part every year. That will help you to, uh, to calculate how often you need to supply. Uh, it will also help you to consider if you need to do some repackaging and so on. But I would say a really rigid work here to do the mapping is, is a key to succeed uh, with the next step that is uh, the layout. Because as I said earlier, a layout is really important in order to succeed with the forklift free project. Uh, and there are some different parameters that needs to be uh, considered. First of all, you have the supply routes. So in the plant, you will have some routes uh, where you deliver the material and you can do this in different ways. You can have a route for a specific assembly line or you can choose to have a, a route for a specific type of uh, load, for example. You can choose to have a long route or a short route. So here are different options that needs to be considered and it's very much dependent on the mapping that you're doing of, of the load and uh, the parts that you will deliver to your uh, production lines. We also have the width of the aisle. Uh, forklift free is good from that perspective that it enables uh, you to make more narrow aisles. Uh, so that is good, but it's also important to not make it too uh, narrow because uh, yeah, that will also be a, a risk factor I mean, when it's a really small distance between the, the moving vehicle and the, the surrounding. Then we have uh, the driver visibility. This is something that we often see when we're out in the plants that it's really not considered. When you're driving around with trains uh, and you maybe have five cars in it, it's important to have the visibility so the driver always can see the the last cart, even if it's driving in corners, for example. So that is something to consider, to not place uh, high racks or machines in, in, in the corner if it's possible. Uh, then we have the travel directions. Uh, we see in many plants now that uh, they are using uh, one-way um, routes. And uh, that is very efficient from a uh, from a space perspective, because you can utilize that space for, for manufacturing um, area or storage area. But it, re it will require that you uh, invest in equipment that enables you to unload carts or pallets uh, to both left and right side. I think we will, we will see more of this uh, later in the presentation. Also, the floor quality is important to uh, evaluate uh, going from forklifts to carts. Uh, will add some requirements to the, to the floor. Uh, carts have uh, smaller casters, so it's obviously more sensitive for uh, yeah, holes and uh, obstacles uh, in its way. Then we have the picking area and the receiving area. And of course, uh, the good thing is if those are located close to each other. We also see a trend that the picking areas where you re, uh, repackaging the part and transport them or yeah, move them to the final assembly lines are decentralized. So the, the areas where you do the kitting, for example, are placed very close to the final place of uh, consumption. And by doing that, you can have a, a simple manual uh, transports between the, the kitting and the, the assembly line. And we also have some case with the hill driving. So if you know that you will do that, uh, it will add some extra requirements on the carts, for example. Uh, some companies also have the outside routes. It's also all important to, to know so we can adapt, adapt uh, cards and equipment to handle uh, those environments. And then specific areas for pedestrians but also for uh, forklifts. So even if uh, companies say that they're going forklift free, it's more like uh, um, streamlined so we have the forklifts in a very limited area where they actually do what they are intended to do to lift the pallets and so on so they are not doing the transport but they are doing the handling from 
from a truck, uh, for example, to the storage or from storage on, onto a, uh, a cart. Yeah, and then we have the uh, carts. And as I said earlier, this is a key enabler uh, when, you are want, when you want to go forklift uh, free. Uh, and it's uh, really integrated with all the other parameters that we have discussed. But from a cart perspective, FlexCube have a standardized design process for this. So uh, from left to right, we are starting with our building blocks. Uh, and based on those blocks, we can configure uh, the carts in different steps. So we start with a platform, then we add the casters. We add, for example, tow bars, handlebars, and then finally the top structures. So this is really going through each step, uh, choosing different configurations. And based on that, you will end up with a cart that is custom made for your, for your needs. And you can see that uh, we have highlighted here uh, how the integration looks like. So if we take the mover, for example, the, the choice of mover and how that looks like need to be integrated with the platform. It also affects uh, the choice of casters. And in some cases, it also affects the choice of tow bar. And when it comes to the layout, I would say that all those steps uh, are affected. So the layout needs to be considered through all those design steps uh, when you configure the carts, uh, like uh, tracking, um, how easy it is to roll if it's like narrow uh, aisles and so on. So it, that needs to be considered from the really start when you're doing the design of the carts. And we also have the loads, uh, and that is uh, most of the times uh, integrated with the, the last steps where we are developing the top structures. So if you have a pallet, for example, we do a top structure for that. If you have a specific uh, kit of material, we do a top structure for that. But uh, to conclude this, the, the cart is a really a crucial part of uh, going forklift free and it uh, is affected by a lot of parameters. This is the FlexCube uh, standard blocks that are used to build a cart. So it's like uh, Lego bricks, it's four standard components. It's the flex beam, it's the flex tube, uh, we have the flex cube and the flex plate. And those uh, four components all have the same interface which means that they can be combined in a lot of different combinations. And by doing that, we can create uh, different cards with uh, many different looks and uh, properties. So I will go through a little bit about the different uh, moving options. So if we start with a tow tractor, which is the most common one, there is two ways to move the material and you can have a direct connection to the cart. In that case, you have a tow bar that is directly connected and you have a tow bar from, from each cart. You also have an option with a mother daughter. Then you have a, a mother frame that is connected to the tow tractor and then the carts, which is called the daughters, the daughter carts are connected to those frames. And some pros and cons for those type of solutions. If you look at the direct uh, connection, uh, in most cases, uh, cases it's a little bit uh, lower initial investment because you don't need to invest in the, in the mother frames. And it's also more scalable because if you want to increase the capacity, you can just uh, increase the number of carts for a mother solution, it's more like steps. Uh, so you, you, you buy a number of frames that will give you a certain capacity. And then when you want to take the next level, you need to buy a new set of, of mother frames. Uh, another uh, advantage with a direct uh, connection is that you can combine different uh, cart sizes in the same train. So if you have a small cart, and a large cart, uh, you can transport those in, in the same uh, train setup. That is a bit more difficult when you have a mother-daughter solution because then you have predefined uh, sizes. Um, yeah, and uh, 
some advantages with the mother-daughter solution. Uh, thanks to the, the mother frame, it's really quick to connect and release the cards. And the main benefit is that uh, the card can be released independent of each other. So you can have an empty slot uh, in the first mother, but still have a card in, in, the, in the second mother. So you can have empty slots, but still uh, using the same train without rearranging the cards. So that is the uh, main advantage. This shows some pictures of the direct connect solutions. So in that case, we have the tow bars. Uh, in most cases, we also have the handlebar to, to uh, move the cart around when it's not connected to the tow tractor. You can also see a braking function. And those two carts are both uh, low riders in order to, in, to achieve uh, a good ergonomics. This also shows uh, carts. So to the left, it's uh, pallet carts, uh, Euro pallet carts in uh, half pallet and full pallet size. And as you can see, those two sizes are combined into the same train. And in this case, they are running empty uh, carts. And uh, when they are empty, you can uh, run longer trains. So you can have really long trains when you have empty carts because there is no weight on it. And that is also an uh, advantage with having a direct connection with hung and hitch. On the right side, you see a similar solution, but in this case, it's a shelf application. And also here we have uh, five carts connected in the train. So it's a pretty long train, but still it's uh, moving around in a very narrow env environment with a small aisles. And you can see the wheel configuration on those uh, carts are that we use the fixed casters in the center of the cart. So that is one enabler to have this uh, outstanding tracking performance. Uh, when it comes to a mother-daughter solution, there is uh, some different principles. Uh, you can have a daughter cart on the ground, but it also functions where it's lifted up. And uh, when it comes to flow, you can have the one side flow uh, and you have the two side flow uh, where the cart can flow through the, through the frame. And here is some different examples. Uh, this is uh, a mother frame from steel and you can only lo load it from one side. Uh, so that means that you need to plan your routes so you know that you'll always have the right orientation when you, when you come into a train and you want to pick up or uh, release some, some carts. But this train is uh, lifting up the cart during transport, so it's a really quiet and sophisticated solution. So the, the casters of the flex tube cart in this case is not in contact with the ground during transport. The one to the left shows another option, and in this case you have a two side, so you can uh, you can enter and you can release from different uh, sides of the frame. And of course, from a layout perspective, that is really flexible because you don't need to plan if you are going to re release this to the left or the right side. And in this case, it all, it's also off the ground, which means that uh, yeah, you will have a, a silent and, uh, and good ride for the cart. To the right here, we see another solution. This is from Linda and uh, it's called the bridge type. So you can see the flex cube cart with, uh, with boards on it. So it uh, it's can be entered from both sides and then it's lifted up during the transport. Here are some other solutions where you can see the cart is lifted up. So that was the tow tractors. And as I said, there is also really strong trend for uh, using uh, robots and we have uh, yeah it's a pretty fast development of this but uh, and also a lot of different uh, namings so we have the agv that is the automated guided vehicle we have the agc automated guided cart but the, the common thing with those two is that they are uh, 
they are following some installed infrastructure in the in the, in the plant. So they are following a magnetic strip or some uh, laser guidance or, or something that helps them to navigate. The latest trend is to use uh, what is called SDV, that is self-driving vehicle. And those uh, don't need to have uh, infrastructure, so they are self-learning. They can move around in the plant and create their own maps and so on. So that is uh, the future and it's uh, a really flexible way of, uh, of handling forklift-free uh, forklift issues uh, because the routes and so on can easily be changed for those type of vehicles. But uh, independent or regardless of uh, what navigation technology that is used, there are three main ways of connecting carts to, to a robot. We have the first one where the cart is lifted up. We have uh, a second one where you just uh, ride underneath and mount it. And the third one is that you have a tow AGV, so you are towing the carts. And there are different pros and cons. Uh, with with those different alternatives. From this, the lift perspective, uh, the casters are not in the ground, so it's a really smooth uh, ride. And it's also flexible. It's pretty easy to make carts for those type of uh, robots because the interface is really easy. It's just a flat surface and the robot is coming underneath and lift up the cart. When it comes to the, the mount principle, uh, that is uh, often less complex robots because you don't need the lifting function and you don't need like any energy used to lift the load up and down all the time. So that is the advantages and we also have a tow tractor which I think we will see more of. In that case it's like a tow tractor but it's automated so it will navigate through the plant on its own. And also here we see that and we will have like self-navigating tow tractors that doesn't require any infrastructure. Here are some examples, uh, integration with flexible carts. So the one to the left uh, is a lift function. The cart is uh, traveling on top and then it's lifted up by the, by the robot. The one to the right uh, is the mount principle. So the, the robot is sliding underneath the cart and is connected through a pin interface, but it's not lifted. Yeah, and then we have the final part, uh, that is to adapt uh, the carts to, yeah, to really achieve the good ergonomics for the ones that will uh, pick the parts. And uh, this is uh, some waste, waste list that uh, we discussed in our lean production webinar. But it can be that the operators need to bend, for example. They need to search for parts. They need to rearrange parts. They need to do walking and so on. And this is where uh, it really comes in with the, with the flexible carts because then it can be adapted to the different needs. So we can make sure that the, the platform, the caster setup is uh, aligned with the, with the way you choose to, to move the carts. Then we can make custom top structures in order to have this final uh, ergonomic requirements fulfilled. So here you see some different examples with the rotating carts, mother daughter carts, shelf carts and so on. Also tilt carts. So if you are interested in more uh, top structures and see what can be created, I recommend you to visit the web page and go into the solutions library. There you can see a lot of different uh, options. Yeah, this shows some uh, pictures from the field, how parts are presented. And this is used together with a mother and uh, daughter frame. This is used together with an AGV. So this is uh, at the seat supplier for uh, automotive. So they are doing a lot of seats and it's really, really high volume production. So it's uh, very demanding from an ergonomic perspective. So you, in this case, we have extendable shelves to achieve the good ergonomics and we integrate with it, as I said, with the ADV to transport those to the final positions. 
this is another uh, way of uh, presenting the material. So we have a, a fixed cart, and in this case, we have a mother-daughter solution, as you can see. And uh, the daughter carts are placed on the ground. So this is a really simple and mechanical solution. And those da daughter carts can be released from the mother, and they are placed around the product uh, on the assembly line. And these carts even follow the product along the assembly line. And the, the way this is transported is with a tow tractor and you have a direct connect through the tow bar in the front. So that was a little bit of the forklift free. Uh, and if you feel that, uh, or if you have an application already now that you need to have, uh, or that you need to look into, there is two different ways of creating a cart design with FlexCube. We have a design for all, and with that, you can create your own cart. We are constantly developing uh, this product, and Olaf will uh, soon show some, some demonstration of this. We also have the design on demand, and that is uh, our very unique process to create carts together with the customers. And the process looks uh, like this. So this is uh, based on a web meeting. Uh, that you will have with, together with one of our FlexCube designers. So it starts with a preparation step. It's like 15 to 30 minute preparation uh, just to look into what type of loads uh, you want to transport, what is the weight, the quantities and so on. Based on that, that is the input to the meeting where we actually do the design uh, live together. And after that meeting, at least, uh, I would say, 50% of the cart is finalized, and we agree on all the, all the requirements going forward. And the next step after the meeting is that we are finalizing the design, and that takes normally around a week. So after a week, you will have an offer with a quote, you will have the design of the cart, you will have the specifications and some really nice photos and renderings and so on. So you can have a good sales material internally in your company. And then we can ship, we will ship uh, assembled or in bits and pieces. So that is a uh, choice of the customer. I wanted to promote the other uh, webinars that will come. Uh, it's a uh, design on, in Onshape that is uh, coming up next. So that is the 6th of October. Then we have some other managed projects uh, and integrate with AGVs uh, that is coming up next. So, uh, yeah, we will post more news about this on, uh, on the web page. So there you will find all the information about those coming webinars. But just as a, a small teaser for the next uh, webinar, I will hand over to Olaf that will show you how to make a forklift free application in uh, Onshape. So go ahead, Olaf. Okay. Yeah. Um, see, am I the presenter now? Yeah, I will do it. Okay. Right now. Yeah, okay, I got it. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, so as Per mentioned here today, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Onshape or, you know, more specifically how you can use Onshape to build your own solution uh, with the FlexCube components. Um, yeah, so what is Onshape? Uh, Onshape is a fully cloud-based CAD software. Uh, you can run it on PCs, Macs, tablets, and phones. Uh, basically, uh, any device that has access to a web browser. Uh, and Onshape is also um, an important part of our Design for All project um, and uh, an important um, part of that to enable you, the customer, to design your own solutions. So we're going to hop into Onshape here. Uh, and I have opened a new uh, document here. Um, so uh, another great thing about Onshape, which makes it good for us to use uh, in our Design for All uh, uh, project, is that it requires uh, no licenses. Uh, and everyone uh, can start a free account, uh, which has limited space and usage, but you can at least try it out and, and uh, design a couple of cards uh, for free. Uh, it also requires no installation, uh, 
uh, since it run, runs in the browser, uh, and that means also that all updates to the software will uh, automatically be implemented in the software. Um, so when we first open up the the um, uh, a new document in Onshape, uh, it will look something like this. Uh, you will have two tabs here on the bottom. It works kind of like Google Docs, if you've used that before. So you have the Part Studio, and here is where you draw new parts. Uh, and you have an assembly area where you assemble models. So to access the FlexCube uh, CAD library, we'll press Insert up here. We'll go to Browse Documents, and we'll search for FQ. Uh, and here, here we have the FlexCube building blocks. Uh, and today I'm going to build a basic uh, Europe palette card, uh, which is a very common solution uh, when working with fork-free production. Um, so a Euro palette card is 1200, or a Euro palette is 1200 by 800, uh, with the FlexCube concept, uh, which we work with uh, 70 millimeter increments, that means our card is going to be 1260 by 840. So uh, I'm going to start by implementing here an 840 beam. See, it's loading. Okay. I don't know why it's taking so long. It seems to be something weird here. Um, There we go. Okay, so I got two. That's why. Uh, yeah. And um, while we're at it, we're gonna add an 1190 beam as well for the long side. Uh, and you can add several parts at once. So when you have implemented the parts you want, press OK. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Let's remove this one. Uh, okay. So this is gonna be the short end, and this is the long end. And another good thing about on shape is you really only need to use uh, one type of constraints when constraining parts together like this. And, and it's, I like to use the fasten mate. And what it does is you have these uh, uh, connecting points here. Uh, so if I press this one here and this one over here, it will snap. And then I can rotate it around that axis. And when I press OK here, it locks it in all three directions. So it's fully constrained. Uh, and like in other CAD softwares, you can just click a part, uh, and copy it, and paste it. You get one more of those. Whoops. Like that. Like that. Okay, so there we have our framework. Uh, and we go again to insert and browse documents. And this time we can go to recently opened. Uh, and here we can find uh, libraries we've been visiting before. So this one, this time we're going to insert a palette guide for the palettes. You can also search here in the search window if you know what part you're looking for. We're going to insert that. And we're also going to want some. Uh, uh, wheel boxes uh, to attach the casters to, and as well as a flex beam to access the support between the wheel boxes. So when we're done, we we'll click OK, and then we start constraining again. Okay, I think I got the wrong point there. Okay. Okay, so it's really simple to, when it comes to assembling, uh, really smooth since you just, uh, you're just using um, one constraint. Okay. We 
rotate. Okay, got the wrong pointer. Okay, uh, and next we're going to touch the wheel boxes for the casters. Okay. Uh, like so. And then we'll get three more in here. And then the beams for the support. Okay, there we go. Um, so as you can see here now, it looks a little bit messy with all of these mate connectors. So what you can do, uh, is you right click one and you click hold uh, hide all mate connectors so you can remove all of them at once uh, and last but not least we're gonna insert some casters here so with the browse documents recently opened and uh, building blocks and then we we'll search here for I think search some 200 millimeters nylon casters and right now they're gray but we're gonna update them so we have colors soon uh, and let's get one with a with a break as well. Insert them. Press OK. There we go, and last, we also have the tow bar. Um, Olaf, I think you should add the fixed casters to the cart in one end. Okay, yeah, yeah, since it's not a manual handling cart, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, so might take a little while for the tow bar to load in here, a lot of parts. Uh, so while we do that, we can go and find the fixed casters. So we have search for fixed and 200. Or, oh, switch to parts here. Uh, so fixed 200 millimeter nylon. Uh, now, yeah, we might have to wait a little while for the tow bar to load in, but as soon as they show up here, we are just going to press OK here. I think our internet might be a bit, little bit slow today. Um, 
so I don't know if maybe we should continue the presentation. Seems to be loading here. Yeah, I think this is uh, this is the last activity in, in the webinar, so we can open up for questions while we are loading here. So we don't have any more to show today. I hope that uh, it was interesting data and that you are uh, interested in learning more about the FlexCube concept. Uh, we are always for your service, so you can just contact us. Uh, you can call us or you can email, you can book uh, design on demand if, or if you want training in on shape and so on. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the webinar and I hope that I will see you in the next one regarding on shape that we will have in two weeks. So yeah, we are here to answer your questions if you have any related to the webinar or if you have some other questions that you want to discuss. Okay, so if there is no more questions, we will finalize the meeting. You haven't managed to load the tow bar yet, Olof? Uh, I can have a look. Let's see, yeah, it's in now. Yeah, so let's do that as a final, and then we will close the meeting. Yeah, see, I'll remove the fixed caster for now. Okay. Great. Thank you, everyone. So we will send out also a survey. So we are uh, very, we appreciate very much if you can uh, fill in that uh, so that we can improve our webinars for, for the future. Uh, all type of feedback is uh, important for us. So thank you very much. And thanks for joining. Uh, see you in the next webinars. Bye bye.